Good morrow, welcome to Chip Tips. Today's question is, what is a sea shanty? A little definition. Sea shanties are work songs meant to raise morale among seagoing crew as well as synchronize labor. Since the early days of sail, they were used to pep up the crew, but they weren't largely written down until the 1700s and 1800s, an oral tradition. What were these songs about? Well, what influenced them? Well, work. What else? An old one is Hall on the Boland. How do I know this? The Boland is a line that became rendered obsolete later during the Age of Sail. In the song, they just say what they're doing. Hall on the Boland. Hall on the Boland for Kitty is my darling. And also a big theme was destinations and people met. And while we're at it, women were a big theme. And as you might have guessed, Drink was a big influence on sea shanties, as in Drunken Sailor. Although getting drunk on the job is very taboo. Don't do it. Put him in a scuttle with a horse pipe on. Put him in a scuttle with a horse pipe on. Him early in the morning. Woo! <laughs> Lastly, longing was a big theme, as in Old Maui, a song of missing home. So with this in mind is Old for Me Grog, Sea Shanty, Bearish Privateers, 10,000 Miles Away, no, these are sea songs. What's the difference? I'm so glad you asked. Sea songs were sung to pass time, be enjoyable, on show as well. One way that's e easy to differentiate is to consider sea songs that are ballads, music that is meant to tell a story. All For Me Grog tells the story of a man losing everything to drink. Here, here's money. Give me a drink. Booze! Ah. Uh. And it's all for me grog, me jolly jolly grog, all for me beer and tobacco. And these songs also follow what you consider a musical formula. Sea shanties emphasize repetition. They were work songs. They couldn't focus on lyrics, memorizing them. They had to focus on their work, not the words. And there was no instrumentation. It's hard to play a guitar when you have both hands hauling lines. They are led by the shantyman who invents the lyrics in the moment. Meanwhile, the rest of the company joins in on the chorus, the parts that repeats each time. Now, lyrics have been recorded, but each company really creates their own, each shantyman, really. There are also three groups of sea shanties. Well, this is up for debate, but generally speaking, I personally like these groupings. We have short haul shanties, Long haul shanties and capstan and windless shanties. For the short haul shanty, these were meant for jobs that were to be done quicker. The shanties themselves were quicker and they did not have a full chorus. Instead, they were, they were an alternate of a line of the chorus and a line of the verse, like in Randy Dandy. Now, long haul shanties are sometimes referred to stamp and go shanties, were used for, well, longer activities, such as hoisting up the yard, or, you know, you know, the yard. Now these shanties were formatted like more traditional songs, with four lines of verse, four lines of chorus. But don't worry, there's plenty of repetition to go around. One example is roll the old chariot along. Tepston and windless shanties were slower, more melancholy, uh, and used during hard labor, and, oh yeah, used while on the capstan or windlass. Anyway, these were laborious mechanisms to move, so the music moved slower. This shanty was generally formatted as a mix of the last two. The first four lines are the verse, chorus, alternating, while the next four are all chorus. One example, typically sung when preparing to go to shore, is Leave Her Johnny. Get it? It's the ship! Why are sea shanties and songs generally grouped together now? Well, that's because of public performances that had, over time, mixed them. But make no mistake, sea shanties were not for leisure. But now they are. Weird, no? So now they're dead. No. At least their old meaning and purpose. I say you should join me in reviving them. What say you? Will you enlist with Captain Trip? Thanks for joining me on Trip Tips. Good evening.